others have had after taking this. One in particular, her name was Patricia, and I encourage her to get back in touch with me, Rob D at Infowars.com, R-O-B-D at Infowars.com. We'd like to have you on as a guest so you could talk about this and flesh it out more. We also had a lady talk about how the CPS was, after their kid was having uh, seizures, the CPS was getting called into from the school. The school was calling them. And so that is the way the whole system is set up. They give your kids these soft kills that they cause them to react adversely. And then you're the bad parent. And so we got to call CPS on you and then start controlling how your kids are so we can give them more drugs. And that's what they want to do in the end. It's not just Mexico and the United States. It's all over the world. I just found out hundreds of adverse reactions uh, to the vaccine reported in vaccine. Teenagers were injured by the shot. Um, here's, you know, three girls dead, others hospitalized after the Gardasil HPV vaccine. This was September 14th, 2011. So this yeah. is an ongoing thing. Uh, you, you're not going to hear about it on the mainstream news, but I tell you what, folks, it is all over the Internet. And the studies are out there, not just the, the Merck's own studies, but independent studies mm -hmm. that prove without a doubt that it is a very, very dangerous vaccine. There's a lot of adverse reactions to it. Yep. And I remember last year, uh, right about this time when back to school was happening, there were a lot of little girls dying after the flu shot. And they had been vaccinated from the flu or they would die from the flu. And they were like, well, they were vaccinated. So we don't understand why they died. The, the press never wants to do their due diligence. The mainstream media never wants to go, hey, is there a connection here? They never ask that question. Right. They, they print it and go, well, she got the flu shot and then she died of the flu. It's the same one she was vaccinated against. No connection. Well, Obviously no connection. Even though in the flu shot insert, it says it can give you the flu. Well, that's because it's a billion dollar industry and, yeah. and I think they're going to keep uh, promoting it. Uh, Tom Tomorrow, fourth hour, we're going to have people call in with their adverse reaction stories. So be prepared for that. If you have an adverse reaction story that you want to share with people out there to warn them about the dangers of vaccines, be sure you call in tomorrow during the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. That'll be 2 p.m. Central. Right on. Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining me. Coming up next, Donald Trump. He's done his first flip-flop of the 2016 campaign. Be sure to check it out. We'll be right back. Well, rumor has it that Donald Trump is going to fold under pressure and he's going to sign a loyalty pledge to the Republican Party. This means he will have to endorse the 2016 Republican presidential nominee, no matter who it is. And it also means that he will be unable to run as a third party candidate under any circumstances. The GOP is obviously worried that if Trump were to run as a third party candidate, that it would jeopardize their chances against the, well, the likes of Hillary Clinton or whoever is going to be the Democrat nominee. Now, Trump has threatened to go rogue many times, even during the debate on Fox News. We all remember that. Now, according to Politico, they are saying that a close associate of Donald Trump says he intends to sign the loyalty pledge, just like all the other candidates. Now, in my opinion, I think this is another Trump flip-flop because we never really know where he stands on a host of issues because he's all over the map. Now, I was really hoping that he was going to stick to his guns and hold the Republican Party hostage because not signing the loyalty pledge, well, that gave him lots of leverage. If there is, you know, if there's no danger of Trump cutting loose and running on his own, well, then you can expect the attack dogs. This is when they're really going to come out against him, folks. And you watch. Once he signs that loyalty pledge, that's when all Trump's skeletons are going to start coming out of the closet. I think it's a bad political move on his part. And I think we are seeing the beginning of Operation Dump the Trump. Will Donald Trump sign the GOP pledge precluding a third party run? According to a close associate, the GOP candidate intends to sign the loyalty pledge that would bind him to endorse the Republican nominee and would preclude him a third party run. The Republican National Committee has made it clear that they want every candidate running for nomination to sign a pledge not to break off and run as a third party candidate under any circumstances. The GOP is worried that third party campaigns will jeopardize the party's chances against the eventual Democratic presidential candidate. And as he's currently the most popular candidate, the GOP is concerned that Donald Trump may break off from the pact and he has repeatedly threatened to do so. We're looking for you to raise your hand now. 
Raise your hand now if you won't make that pledge tonight. Mr. Trump. So, Mr. Trump. Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul reminded everyone that it was Ross Perot who ended up giving us the first Clinton, and if Trump breaks off, he could give us another Clinton. Their royal highness, indeed. The Sun published a secret 1933 film showing Queen Elizabeth being taught the Nazi salute by her treasonous uncle Edward VIII, the Prince of Wales. He would later be known as King Edward VIII and Emperor of India, but would be quietly removed from the throne less than 12 months later as he remained pro-Nazi even after the war accelerated. His scandalous marriage to a doubly divorced American woman would be his downfall, as the history books would have you believe. However, the once and future king was pigeonholed to the Bahamas as its governor because his Nazi sympathies became widely known during World War II. Two years before his death, Edward told an interviewer that he never thought Hitler was such a bad chap. An MI5 report featuring a British admiral who had attended Hitler's 1937 Nuremberg rally said that Hitler would soon invade, but there was no reason to worry about it because he would bring the Duke of Windsor, formerly King Edward, over as king. So how far back has the German parasite sat on the English throne? The lineage is long but begins with the Act of Settlement of 1701 when the Parliament of England granted the English throne to Protestant heir Sophia of Hanover. A German lineage of King George's soon followed, as did the American War for Independence. In 1840, Queen Victoria married her first cousin, Prince Albert, the son of the Duke of the saxe coburg gotha House in Germany. Up until the First World War, the saxe coburg gotha and another German aristocratic name, Wetton, were used. Those names were replaced with Windsor, essentially a cover for a hard line of German aristocrats occupying the British throne. Queen Elizabeth married Prince Philip. Prince Philip is from the German house of Glücksburg. Two of Prince Philip's brothers-in-law fought for the Nazis, and many of his relatives were linked with the Nazi party. In a frank interview, he said they found Hitler's attempts to restore Germany's power and prestige attractive, and admitted they had inhibitions about the Jews. From Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip Sprang, a man so obsessed with his ancestral ties to the bloodthirsty monster Vlad the Impaler that he has bought up so much property in Romania, he now owns an entire village. The genealogy shows that I'm descended from Vlad the Impaler, you see. So I do have a bit of a stake in the country. And Prince Andrew, who was accused of child sex charges after now allegedly being part of Jeffrey Epstein's case of pedophilia. And Prince Edward, whose wife Sophie was embroiled in a scandal involving sex tours, drugs, and gay prostitution after she was recorded by a reporter posing as a sheik. And have they stopped? No, they've increased. The royal coverage of the royal carriage. Almost every time I see CNN, it's the Queen of England, Gracious Leader. Oh, we love you. They'll have that British reporter on going, they're probably having pea soup and something proper meal. And again, I'm not an Anglophobe, ladies and gentlemen. I love England, love a lot of the culture, it, it's amazing. Led with the Magna Carta and the, and the real Renaissance worldwide, so much has come out of the British Isles, but not the globalist and the Transylvanian royal family perched like giant stinking vultures on the carcass of the UK. So when German Prince Harry dons a Nazi insignia at a private party, and sheepishly apologizes to the adoring brainwashed public, and films are revealed of Queen Elizabeth giving the Heil Hitler salute. Real Britons know full well they are under occupation. John Bound for Infowars.com. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, I'm in Fox Lake still for the second day. This is uh, the area where the manhunt's going on for the three suspected cop killers that shot and killed a lieutenant who had been a 30-year veteran of the police force. Now, last night I was able to see uh, the ending of the vigil. I was actually out in the neighborhoods going door to door as marshals and things like that were walking through neighborhoods, chasing down leads, trying to find out information where these killers could be at and I caught the very tail end of the vigil. There was probably a thousand people coming out there, which shows you the community really 
like this guy, that he was a good guy, a stand-up guy, not a bad cop that you hear about, but a good one, because there are some good cops out there. And to see that many people come out, I hope that one day if I die, that many people will show up for my funeral, for my vigil, uh, to support what I stood for in life. But that just goes to show you what kind of a man he was. Then you have a disgusting human being who just throws that all the way and decides, you know what, I don't even care about that. I'm going to be selfish because I need attention. So if you watched my Ustream last night, the Alex Jones Live, you saw that I was up until about 2 a.m. running around in the blockade chasing after the suspects that we got a tip on because a lady called in said that she was essentially uh, two guys tried to rob her. They were trying to get a ride up to Milwaukee. Uh, she gave the description to fit the guys that the police were looking for, which was a white guy and a black guy, and there's one more white guy somewhere. And this turned into an all-night manhunt. Helicopters in the air, aircraft, police officers everywhere from all around, marshals, FBI, ATF, everyone's out there, dog units. And I'm sitting out there inside this area walking through cornfields because of a hoax, because a lady needed attention because she was that starved for attention from someone that she decided to fabricate and completely and totally lie and screw this entire thing up. If they don't find these cop killers, it will be because of her. And you know what they're gonna do right now? They said that they're gonna charge her with two counts of misorderly conduct. Are you kidding me? You just had an all night manhunt go on. I slept with the police scanner on all night waiting to hear something and then I wake up this morning to see that it was all a lie. Well, guess what? I hope you go to jail for a long time because you're gonna get a ton of attention. Orange is the new black. I hope that orange suit fits you well. Now stay tuned, I'll be on the Alex Jones Show here in just a little bit, talking about my experiences yesterday, walking through the neighborhoods in Fox Lake in the pursuit of these suspected cop killers. Once again, I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed evening, and we'll see you back right here tomorrow night. See you. A clean, toxic-free body is the foundation of true health. Introducing Deep Cleanse by InfoWarsLife.com, a scientifically formulated blend of nanocolloidal zeolites and organic ingredients that aid the body in cleansing chemicals and toxic metals. Using our proprietary multi-step extraction technology, Deep Cleanse is our most affordable all-in-one cleanser. With concentrated organic compounds like cilantro, milk thistle, fulvic acid, orange peel, zeolites, and others, Deep Cleanse doesn't hold back. Instead of buying five, six, or even seven different cleansing products. We use decades-old scientific research to put together the Rolls-Royce of all-in-one cleansing. Look, there's a reason Deep Cleanse is the only product on the market that uses our proprietary Spigerex herbal processing technique. We use only the highest quality organic herbs backed by serious research, and we still bring it to you at the best price out there. If you wish to find Deep Cleanse and experience the all-in-one cleansing, visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.